And we're ready for that videotape now, so we'll go right to it. The Ace Auto Parts Street Stocks coming up with their first heat race, their first of two heat races Saturday night at Tom Stimus' DeSoto Speedway. There you see Jamie Luderman on the pole position in car number 78. Outside of him, Chip McCormack, car number 83. Luderman grabs the lead going into turn one. McCormack out of Avon Park in that Max Auto Salvage. He has to go high, and underneath, it's car number nine, Doug Radley. Gus Corson gets down on the apron. He and Red McBride swap a little paint in turn four. And here they come down the front straight away. And pretty soon you're going to see a black car streak his way towards the front. You can see him down there on the inside. That's the new driver of the Walker Equipment Pontiac, the veteran Jerry Rogers out of Tampa. Veteran of Golden Gate Speedway, East Bay Raceway. He's just as at home on the pavement as he is the dirt. And there he's already up into that second spot in car number 72. Field coming out of turn four. There you see McBride running in the third spot. Doug Radley out front in car number nine. Here comes Rogers. He's zeroing in on that back bumper. Gives him a little tap out of turn two. Goes to the outside. They're wheel to wheel in turn three. Rogers gets a little bit out of shape as Radley returns the favor. Rogers able to gather it back up. He's out front with Doug Radley running second. Here comes Red McBride in that Bradenton Yellow Cab New York Hair Company Pontiac. He's up to challenge the TNL tire Chevrolet of Doug Radley for the second spot down the back straightaway. Jerry Rogers out front in car number 72. Here you see McBride on the outside. He works his way around Doug Radley trying to bring Ron Kowalski with him in car number 28. Kowalski on the outside in that Miller Insulation Chevrolet. He moves up into the third spot as Radley falls off the pace. Gus Corson, car number 41, now riding fourth. There you see the big lead that Jerry Rogers has. Once he got out front, he began to stretch it out over McBride and Kowalski and Corson running in the fourth position. Checkered flag coming out for Jerry Rogers out of Tampa in car number 72, the Walker Equipment Chevrolet. Now we'll go to our second heat race. Starting up on the pole position, the current point leader in the Ace Auto Parts Street Stocks. Also the defending champion, Dennis Wilson Sr. from Bradenton. He's been on the show here. So the Wolfman on the pole position. He takes the lead in that USA Steel Fence Dodge, but right alongside of him, another Dodge, the Bringman Roofing Dodge of Johnny Shields. So Mopar fans, there you go. Side by side, the Dodges running one, two, down the front straightaway. Dennis Wilson Sr. has the advantage going down the front straightaway, but Johnny Shields hanging tough on the outside. There you see Rick Warner, car number 25, the Warner Auto Electric Chevrolet. Rick in his first year of driving doing a fine job in that number 25 Chevrolet as the Sarasota driver now sitting in the second spot as Johnny Shields had a problem, had to slow off the pace, so Warner running second and coming down to take the white flag, it's the Wolfman, Dennis Wilson Sr. looking for the heat race win in heat number two for the Ace Auto Parts Street Stocks. Rick Warner trying to reel him in in car number 25. There's Val Wallen running third in car number 60, the custom Stucco and roofing special, Ford Automobile. There's Dennis Wilson Sr. taking the win. Rick Warner in second, Val Wallen in third. There's the Wolfman, Dennis Wilson Sr., winner of heat race number two for the Ace Auto Parts Street Stocks. Now it's time for some modified mini stock action. Heat race number one, George Davis out of Punta Gorda on the pole in car number 19. Third week out for that automobile. Outside of him, Bonda Martin from Sarasota and the Z Shop Toyota. Jamie Purcell, the Midnight Express Toyota running third. Fourth is Tim Sharon in car number 59. Down the back straightaway, Purcell trying to get the inside line. Bonda Martin beats him into the turn. And it's George Davis out front in car number 19 as he begins to pull away from the field. Meanwhile, Bonda Martin with a rear view mirror full of Jamie Purcell. Chico Alberto in the Holton Racing Ford, car number 33 running in that fourth position. Running fifth is Sharon in the 59 automobile as those four automobiles for second had a good race going for a while, but then Bonda Martin and Jamie Purcell broke away from that pack. George Davis coming down to take the white flag, one lap to go. You can see he's got a pretty good lead in that number 19 automobile. There's your second and third place automobiles for Bonda Martin and Jamie Purcell. Down the back straightaway into turn number three. George Davis, he could just about shut it off and coast home from here as he'll take the checkered flag. Bonda Martin will finish second in the Z Shop Toyota. Jamie Purcell, the Midnight Motorsports Toyota, rounding out the top three. There's your winner, George Davis out of Punta Gorda in car number 19. Here's heat race number two for the modified mini stocks. This class is getting very competitive. I'll tell you, we were talking about before the championship race, there were only four winners. 
and those were Mario Campy, Jimmy Baker, Marsh Goff, and Carol Mills. But now Bruce Carbone has established himself as a front runner in this class. He started on the pole position, went to the front immediately, and here comes the pack behind him. Another guy running strong in this division now is Tim Furstenberger in the 301 auction Mercury as he is doing a fine job. So it's not just Punta Gorda anymore in the modified mini stock class. Some of these other guys are starting to establish themselves as front runners as Bruce Carbone showed in that great win he had in that modified mini stock championship race just a couple of weeks ago in the Clouser Volvo Ford. There's Carbone out front, Jimmy Baker doing everything he can to try to get around him, but Carbone just too strong for him in heat race number two for the modified mini stocks. There you see Tim Furstenberger. He's holding off a couple of fast cars there. Marsh Goff and Mario Campy as Furstenberger outruns them down the back straightaway as they head down into turn three. Furstenberger right in there challenging Jimmy Baker for the second spot. So there's five automobiles coming down in the battle for the lead. And as the checkered flag comes out, Bruce Carbone takes the win in the Clouser Volvo Ford. Jimmy Baker second, the J&J Baker Enterprises Ford. And Tim Furstenberger in that 301 auction, GNF 66, BMB Business Machines Mercury taking third. Here's heat race number one for the sportsman division. Coming down to take the green flag. John watched on the pole position in car number 48. Sam Coghill right behind him in that 22 automobile. The number six car for Rick Teller, the Precision Aluminum Chevrolet, starting on the outside of the front row. He's hanging tough out there on that outside groove. He drops back to third spot as Coghill moves underneath him. The guy on the move right now is car number 42, Todd Henson in the Harbor House Chevrolet. Puts that car up into the third spot, now trying to get underneath Sam Coghill coming out of turn two. Watchdell still on the point in that number 48 automobile, the total truck maintenance Chevrolet. And then we had a caution flag, the field lining back up in single file order. Watchdell brings them off the turn. Coghill getting on the inside of Horace Row in car number four as they battle for the third spot directly behind the leaders. But on the outside, it's Todd Henson trying to move around John Watchdell down the back straightaway into turn three. Todd Henson, your new leader, Horace Row in car number four. Looking for racing room. Rick Teller getting a little bit out of shape there. And then it's Horace Rowe and John Watchtel spinning into the infield. They're out of harm's way, so the green light stays on. So that puts Henson out front. Sam Conkill in the Woodhouse Chevrolet out of St. Petersburg moves up to the second spot. Rick Teller up to third in car number six. And there you see Henson extending his lead in that Harbor House Chevrolet. Todd is another guest we've had here on DeSoto Speedway Review, and he's looking to move up into the late model division in the next couple of years. There you see the rest of the field coming along behind. Horace Rowe a lap down now in car number four after that spin on the front straightaway. White flags out, one lap to go. Here comes your leader down the back straightaway. Todd Henson out of Bradenton in car number 42. Sam Coghill trying to reel him in, but runs out of time as Henson takes the win in car number 42. Sam Coghill will finish second in the Woodhouse Chevrolet. Third goes to Rick Teller, the Precision Aluminum Chevrolet. There's your winner, Todd Henson in the Harbor House Chevrolet. Here comes heat race number two for the sportsman division, and it was just beginning to drizzle when this race was green flag. And it was kind of some slippery going there for a while, but Johnny Cassidy grabs the lead in turn one in second spot in that Sarasota Glass and Mirror Ford Thunderbird. It's the veteran Teddy Jernigan out of Tampa, now driving the number 56 car for Earl Savage. Holding down that third spot is car number nine, a new driver behind the wheel of that automobile, Bill Bigley Jr., the all-pro veteran from Naples, now driving the Walker Equipment Chevrolet. Johnny Cassidy leads them down the back straightaway in the TNL Tire and Auto Chevrolet. Cassidy out of Arcadia. And in that second spot, it's still Teddy Jernigan in car number 56. Bill Bigley Jr. running third. And that's the way they ended up. Johnny Cassidy, your winner, the TNL Tire and Auto Chevrolet in second spot. It's car number 56. Teddy Jernigan, the Sarasota Glass and Mirror Ford Thunderbird, and rounding out the top three, Bill Bigley Jr in car number nine, the Walker Equipment Chevrolet.